guard at six foot senior. <laughs> A Power 5 opponent has walked through the doors of the Corbett Sports Center for the first time as the Stanford Cardinal are on the east side of Greensboro to take on the North Carolina A&T Aggies. Hello and welcome inside a very quiet club, Corbett. I am Spencer Turkin alongside my partner, Walter Johnson. We have quite the matchup for you. Just 14 hours ago, this game was finalized. The ink on the contract dried as the athletic directors and the support staff were able to make this thing happen. Stanford was up in Asheville for the Maui Invitational, needed a game, can't go back home, so here they are. You know, they've been in North Carolina a long time, eight days now and probably a few more to go. Stanford played their first three games in Asheville at the Maui Invitational, and now they're here at North Carolina a and it's a big ball game. It certainly is, and the Cardinal are led by Oscar Da Silva, just an absolute monster in the middle. Da Silva, 43% from the three-point range, 90% from the free throw line. Last year, 15.7 points a game, all Pac-12 guy, and he's also preseason all Pac-12, both as a player and on the academic team. The engine that makes the Aggies go is Cam Langley, who led the nation in assists per game just a season ago. So with Cam Langley is the glue for a &T. He does everything for them. He's going to average about eight points a game. He's going to get eight assists a game. He's going to get about five or six rebounds a game. He's also leading the team with three steals a game. Cam Langley can flat out play the game of basketball. And as he goes, so go the Aggies. It's Stanford and North Carolina a &T. It's Sunday matinee basketball. You're watching the MEAC on ESPN3. Back with you here inside the Corbett Sports Center. Spencer Turkin, Walter Johnson, and we are set for basketball in the Gate City. Our officials today, Burke Smith, Tommy Morrissey, and Raymond Stions out of the ACC. And it will be Stanford basketball to get things started here on the east side of Greensboro. <laughs> uh, I thought Stanford actually tipped it out of bounds, but hey, no harm, no foul. First possession of the ball game. Dejon Davis will lead the point for Stanford. And here's Davis from the corner. Let's it fly and converts. You know, Stanford shoots the ball at about a 43% clip, a 33% clip from three-point range, and that's a good start for him today. Dejon Davis coming off an 18-point performance against Indiana up in Asheville. Here's Jones. Leaves it for Cam Langley. All the way around, Tyrone Lyons. Nine to work with for the Aggies. And A&T will reset. Langley to Lyons. Goes for the dunk, and he wow. missed it. Lions make was, a statement early. Yeah, he was. I, I thought he should have laid it off the backboard and got a, got a bucket out of it, but he's trying to make a statement to Stanford. Wills trying to run baseline. Gives it back to De Silva. Mr. Everything, and it's poked out by Quentin Jones. Good defense that time by Quentin Jones. Oh, that looked like a, a basket interference there. Yeah, no call. A, a little too excited here to start things off. A big moment for the program. The first Power Five to enter the Corbett Sports Center. And Oscar De Silva. Check that. It was Spencer Jones. Spencer on Jones. The three pointer. And Stanford right now, two threes to get things going. And a big three and a. And a chance for an and one, so four-point play opportunity for the Aggies. Quinton Jones, the Missouri State West Plains transfer, had 12 points and seven rebounds on five of ten shooting against the Citadel on Thursday. A tough game for a and Dropped that one 78-70. to The Aggies were up by 16 points in the second yeah. half in that game. Just could not hold on. It's a part of the, the process, the maturing process that uh, Coach Jones is working on, getting them to close out games and play hard for 40 minutes. And now some press action from the Aggies, and it forces a turnover. Good pressure out front. And they, the, the good thing about that, Spencer, was they started the pressure as soon as he crossed the timeline, didn't give him a chance to get into the Florida offense. The Cardinal averaging 15.3 turnovers a game so far this year. Langley gets hedged on to. Tyler Jones. The 
Aggies working the ball on the perimeter. Here's May, baseline jumper, rims out, the home rim, not friendly. Good pull up, good look, and those are the shots that you've got to make if you want to stay in this game. Good move by Stanford. Williams up and in, nice and easy, as the Stanford Cardinal continue to run up and down the floor. They seem to love this, this fast-paced game. And I think A&T, one of the things I thought coming in was A&T had to control the pace. But right now, Stanford is doing that. Another three-pointer. And that's a timeout taken by Will Jones and the North Carolina A&T Aggies. You know, they came in shooting 33%, Spencer, but they have been on fire right now from three-point range to begin this ball game. Stanford starts this game out three for three from downtown, four for four from the field. The exact start that head coach Jared Haas was looking for. Definitely. You want your guys to come in, especially you know on a floor that's not yours, come in and shoot the ball well early, put some pressure on the home team, and that's exactly what they've done so far with A&T. Stanford, of course, playing in this game because the Cardinal can't return to Santa Clara County, uh, the new county-level directive because of COVID-19. No sporting events indoors of any kind are allowed within the county, and so Stanford taking up residence at UNC just down the road. Jared has, of course, played for Roy Williams at Kansas. Was quite the ball player for him in a Jayhawks uniform as Langley, cross-court pass. The Aggies looking to get something going on offense. Good ball movement and great backdoor cut that time. Just didn't execute the lob. But that's the kind of ball movement, Spencer, that Ante has to have against this, this kind of matchup zone that uh, Stanford's going to try to play. They certainly will as Stanford, of course, a ton of length out on the floor. Here's Wills to the rack, drops it off, and De Silva slams it home. They are playing end-to-end -end basketball at, at a pace that A&T is just not ready for right now. Three-point shot by A&T, no good. Back the other way come the Cardinal. Here's Davis. Williams has it stolen away by Langley. And that's one of the things he does. He leads the team in steals. Cam Langley, of course third in the nation in total steals this season a year ago ranked first in the country in assists per game right. total assists and was 21st in the nation in, in steals you know he was first in the nation in steals but when you get these guys Dejon Davis and Bryce Wills they led the nation last year in points per possession given up so Stanford is a team that believes in defense top 10 according to Ken Palm a season ago Here's Fred Cleveland out of Chicago, Illinois. Jones turns, fires, too strong. And the rear rebound cleared away by Williams. Wills, cross court for Williams. And the highest ranked recruit in Stanford history can't hit that one. I like what Stanford's doing with the, the, the uh, five out pass and cut. They are putting a lot of pressure on North Carolina a ts defense. Those face cuts are, are devastating to a t right now. Wills takes it himself, and it'll go out of bounds as Fred Cleveland was able to knock it out. And with 15.45 to go here in the first, we'll take a timeout in Greensboro. Comfort. J.T. Fisher Funeral Services .com. Extended its lead to 13 to 3. The Aggies getting looks, Walter. However, just one of seven from the field to start things off. Have not finished, and they just have to finish because they've had some some dead on looks that they couldn't finish. And Stanford again inside, easy bucket. Oscar De Silva, we spoke about him in the open, the preseason first team, all Pac-12 selection, a standout on and off the floor. Here's Blake Harris, the NC State transfer. Spots up from downtown. The bank won't go. And here they are again. And we have a block in the open floor that actually prevented the breakout by Zaire Williams. I tell you what, Stanford runs the floor as well as anybody I've seen this year. Their transition game is what's causing A&T problems right now. 
Michael O'Connell out here on the floor for the Cardinal to run the point. Takes the shot, kicks it out top. Here's Davis. That three, too strong. The rebound down low to Keith, and he can't handle it. It'll go out of bounds. One of the Achilles heels this year for A&T, uh, Spencer, has been rebounding. And they just are not hitting the boards the way they need to. I know Coach Jones has been working on that in practice. It's one of the things he wants to get down. And they're going to have to do it today with the length that Stanford has. A rebounding margin this season of negative 13.2. Cleveland from the corner. That triple short. And cleared away by Stanford. That ball ticked out. Dejon Davis back in the spotlight leading the offense for the Cardinal a year after Tyrell Terry was the first one and done in Stanford program history. The Dallas Mavericks took Terry with the 31st overall pick in the NBA draft. Keith in the lane, turns, fires, that one won't go. And here comes O'Connell, the runner. And the follow-up tip in by Davis, he wasn't boxed out. Wasn't boxed out and... But what I will say is Stanford is attacking at every at every moment, in every mode. They're going to the to the uh, basket hard. They're attacking the rim hard. They're just outplaying AT with an energy right now. This is a team led by Jared Hash in his fifth season that is hungry. Uh, the 10th ranked recruiting class, according to ESPN, just a year ago. A lot of talent out on the floor, trying to get it done. In Palo Alto as uh, Blake Harris, Trunk and Bird, and now you have three Cardinals fighting over the same rebound. De Silva into the corner. Takes. So far, the Cardinal 3 of 5 from beyond the arc. Taking strong shots. It's taking good shots, getting good looks. And a and has just got to settle down. They've got to settle down and just make some of these shots. Like I said, they missed a couple of layups. And if, as soon as they can get settled down, I think they'll get back into this ball game. That ball tipped away by Blake Harris. And it'll be another baseline out of bounds. Max Murrell will check in for De Silva. Another one of these long guys, 6'9", freshman. And uh, he brings a lot of energy to the court as well. Eight to work with. Keith stuck. Needs an outlet. Three on the shot clock. From way downtown. That one short. And the Aggies will clear the board. So A&T trying to break a scoreless drought of four minutes and 45 seconds. And we have a foul on the floor against Noah Tates, the freshman out of Bishop Gorman High School. Yeah, Anthony that time trying to go to some pick and pop situations. Allow Cam uh, Langley to find the open spot. Here's Langley. Feeds it down low for Jones, and he can't do anything with the pocket pass. Beautiful pass. Jones, instead of pump faking, should have just went straight up, drawn the foul, or either got the bucket. But again, Anthony one for 11 shooting now, Spencer. Merle. That jumper won't go. And the Aggies trying to get something going offensively. Cleveland has that pass stolen away as he tried to play it back to the perimeter. Again, Spencer Stanford playing that kind of matchup type zone. It's going to be hard to make those little passes. You've got to be more... More direct with the passes that you make and more and a lot more uh, another three-pointer. O'Connell makes the Aggies pay, and it's 20 to 3, Stanford. Here's Jeremy Robinson, the younger brother of Jerome Robinson, a guard for the Wizards. Pump fakes, leaves it for Cleveland. That shot from the wing is over the rainbow and won't go. Robinson trying to work down low. He can't finish. And the rebound to Keith. This is getting real frustrating for Coach Jones. I see him over here exasperated by the fact these guys can't make layups right now. But I think, like I said, if they calm down and get calm, they'll be okay. O'Connell won't have that one go. The putback for Merle, nothing doing. And Keith on the third opportunity can't score. 
And A&T is in transition. Stanford back quickly though as Langley attacks the rim. The floater too strong and Merle will grab the loose ball. Stanford dominating on the board so far. 15 to six is the lead off the glass as Langley will push the ball ahead to Cleveland. Runs the floor, can't do anything with it and Blake Harris will try for a second opportunity. Robinson from downtown, that one won't go. And Keith will box out. To what Keith uh, comes from a, a family of athletes. This guy's, uh, his father, Adam Keith, was the all-time leading rebounder for Stanford. Third all-time scoring. So he comes from a family that can get it done. Certainly does. His mother, Kristen, a former U.S. Olympic team volleyball player in 1996. And his two sisters, Caitlin and Michaela, are actually members of Stanford's women's volleyball team. The reigning national champs under head coach Kevin Hambly. Here's Langley. Leaves it down low for Robinson. That one blocked by Merle. And the second opportunity will go, and that will end the scoreless drop at 7 minutes and 36 seconds for the Aggies with 10.40 to play. In the first, we've got a timeout on the floor. You're watching the MIAC on ESPN3. on the Fritos. Frito-Lay variety packs, packed with possibilities. Leading it 20 to 5 as Jeremy Robinson will head to the stripe. And he nails his first free throw attempt of the season. So Hopefully far, Stanford holding a and to 2 of 19 shooting from the floor. What are the Cardinals doing well defensively? Well, one of the things they're doing is they're denying the basketball. All the cuts that a and makes, they're denying, and they're getting in the uh, in the zone. The little areas, the zone areas that we want to try to get into, they're getting there and they're putting their, their active hands, active feet, and that's the main thing, the active feet. Davis with 8 to work with, back to Tate's. Five on the shot clock. Jones, step back, jumper, no. And we have an over the back call. That time, great, Kasunas. great box out that time by the Aggies because they have been getting killed on the board so far. And I'm sure Coach Jones mentioned that to them in the huddle over there and said, hey, we got to put bodies on these guys. Stanford leading the rebounding department 18 to 11. As Langley. The bounce pass to Morris, kicks it out. And we have a whistle and an offensive foul. Just again, good defense by Stanford. Moving their feet, getting into places that they need to be, cutting off the gaps, causing anti-problems. That foul charge to Harry Morris, a native of Warmit, Scotland. Here's Davis. Jones. Now Tate's open three. Short, the rebound picked up by the Cardinal. Jones spots up. Can't hit the second opportunity, and Lyons grabs the loose ball. Here comes Langley breaking things out. His pass knocked down by Davis. Tate's through traffic, drops it off to De Silva, who rocks the rim. Just running the court, filling the lanes. Stanford is doing, playing very fundamental basic basketball, and everybody is hustling. The Cardinal, a very disciplined ball club. As that ball stolen, here's the lead to Davis. Goes up and slams it home. Number one, Dejan Davis. Dejan Davis, the senior out of Seattle, Washington. Coming off a year in which he averaged just 8.8 .8 points per game, the only season he did not average double figure scoring. It's his show again. It is, and he comes in to today's game averaging 16.3. But I see why. He gets out on the wing. He runs the court. He finishes well. This guy is something to be reckoned with both in this ball game and in the Pac-12 as they move into conference play. You look 
at this rotation that Jared Haas has. Dejon Davis, Zaire Williams, Oscar Da Silva. Uh, we've seen Spencer Jones look good here in the early going. Uh, this is a team that really should be contending for a Pac-12 championship. They, they should. I mean, if they if they can just get a little more consistent protecting the basketball, not turning it over, they'll be a team to be reckoned with in the Pac-12. And with their length, should be a team that can be reckoned with in the NCAA. In the Cardinals' last game against IU, six assists to 11 turnovers. As Harris with the acrobatic oh, Beautiful the play by Harris that time, and a needed bucket for the Aggies. Blake Harris didn't play the last two games. He was awaiting the birth of his child and still waiting, but since he's local, he's able to play in this one, and we have a hand check foul on the wing. Well, Harris is that guy that can bring some athleticism to the to the table for A&T. Uh, averaging about nine points a game, but he's a guy that can score. He can score the basketball. He could he could be that 14 or 15 point a game score that A&T is looking for. Right now, the Aggies with no one averaging double figures, somewhat reminiscent of an Aggies team from two years ago. As De Silva takes it from the block up under and finishes. Beautiful move inside by De Silva. The up and under. And he's, make, he's getting easy buckets and making A&T's big man look rough. You want to talk about a smart guy. Oscar Da Silva, fluent in six languages, works in stem cell research on campus. As Harry Morris finishes. And you see there why Cam Langley is one of the leaders in the country in assist. For sure, but... It, let's go back to Oscar Da Silva for a oh, second. Just yeah. all around student athlete. And when you think of a college basketball player. He is the epitome of a college basketball player. He is. He's what you come to college to play basketball for, to play, to get an education, to learn, to leave better than you came. As Morris finishes from the free throw line, Will Jones needs to get him going. He has struggled over the last three games, averaging just 1.3 points per game and 2.3 rebounds per game in that span. Two of 14 from the floor. But Harry Morris is a guy who could make, who could be a change agent for the Aggies. De Silva from downtown. Wow. It. <laughs> he can do it all. De Silva is, is just special. A 42.9% three-point shooter. He's four for four today. Um, and that, I think, was... But now five for five, one for one from three-point range. Can't get much better than that, Spencer. Dueling. The response is good. So Antti finally starting to settle down, get into a rhythm. I think he's found some guys who can have some chemistry. And let's see what that does for the next 7-22. Can they get back in this ball game? Both teams have hit four of their last five from the field. Here's the senior, Davis. Great ball movement from the Cardinal. Can't convert, and Lyons snags the board. Lyons, again, does a good job attacking the rim, high point in the basketball, and getting that rebound, getting Antti back on the offensive end. That was a clinic in passing. Dueling to the rack. Can't put it home. Here comes Stanford back in transition. This is what they do well. The fadeaway won't go. And the secondary <laughs> putback for De Silva. There's that man again. De Silva getting it done. Here's Lyons. That one from beyond the arc won't go. And the rebound is taken by Dejon Davis, and he'll slow things up. Stanford back to work. Jones inside to De Silva. Kicks it out. A great steal by Cam Langley that time. He's pushing it up the court. He gets it knocked away, but Dooling gets it. Dooling able to finish strong at the hole. And Kenyon Dooling with five points on the afternoon. Kenyon Dooling has come in and said, hey, this moment is not too big for me. Give me the basketball. Let me show you how to get it done. De Silva puts it on the deck towards the hole, and it won't go. Here's Langley the other direction. The VCU transfer may. You know, I would, I would like to see Harry Morris go post up on the block and give him that big presence down there three, four feet away from the basket. 
The pass down low to May. That one rejected by <laughs> Zaire Williams. Zaire Williamson came and said, hey, take this back to the uh, bench over there. That's the end. Oscar De Silva continues to dazzle out here on the floor. On six and seven shooting. But the other thing, Spencer, 14 points, four rebounds, three assists, two steals. He's filling up the box score and the box, you know, I mean, he's doing it all. He can't say enough about Oscar De Silva. Dueling with four to work with, has to do something. And he made a pass instead of shooting. <laughs> That'll be very frustrating for Coach Will Jones on film later. It will. That, that's what I call a James Harden look. You dribble it all the way down and then try to give it to somebody with a second left. You've got to make a better decision than that. And I'm sure Coach is going to talk to him about that. Davis feeds it to De Silva. That one won't go. And Lyons grabs it off the front iron. Didn't go for Stanford that time, but... Spencer, the ball movement is exquisite. They are just moving, 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 and then they're moving without the ball beautifully. And that's why they're getting so many wide open shots in the lane. Jones, turnaround jumper. That one won't go. That shot seemed a little forced. A little forced and also a little flat. You know, he needs to just get it in rhythm. He'll get his opportunities. He just needs to take the time and be patient. And that's the thing for, for the Aggies, period. Be patient. Don't feel like we've got to knock this 15-point lead down in a minute or two minutes. Take the time. Chip away. Be patient. It'll happen for you. After starting the game 3-for-3 three three from downtown, the Cardinal have gone cold. Just 5-14 of 14 on the afternoon. Now Tyrone Lyons, the jab step, pulls the trigger. And that one won't go. Cleveland, though, grabs the long board. Here's Dooling. And that second try will not fall. You know, the thing that A&T can't... Oh, beautiful run of the court. Couldn't finish for, for Stanford that time. Uh, Zaire Williams got a little too deep. And now the Aggies are going to try and slow up the pace and stay in this ball game to try and make a run. Well, I think, again... Patience is going to be key for a &T. They can't fall in love with the three ball. They've got to play smart basketball. And they need to move the ball the same way Stanford is doing. Lions spins, oh. fires, and scores. Great move by Lions that time. That'll end the two-minute scoreless drought for the Aggies. And a &T trying to inch back into this ball game. And that's going to be the key, Spencer. Being patient and doing it. One possession at a time and not trying to do it all at once. Stanford hasn't scored in three minutes. Dueling. And now the Aggies will get a new play call from Will Jones on the far sideline. You mentioned Stanford hadn't scored in about three minutes. What Ante has done is they've improved their gap defense. They're now moving their feet better and playing better defense in the gaps. And that ball gets knocked out by Stanford. Checking in for the Cardinals, number 20. And Noah Tates will check into the ball game. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. North Carolina A&T starting to claw its way back into this game. After starting so cold, Walter, yes. now 7 of 30 from the field, starting to make some shots. Now also holding Stanford scoreless over the last 339 and trying to make a run over that span. Right. The last 12 shots, they're 6 of 12, which bodes well for A&T. Also improved their defense and stepped it up. And that's why they're getting back into this ball game. Shot came up short. A and T. And here come the Cardinal Williams, the teardrop that won't go, and Langley finds it. Has a couple of guys running the floor, swings it to the left. That shot from Dueling will go. Big three pointer that time by Dueling. He gets it to within a ten point ball game, and that's the kind of thing you're looking for. Possession by possession, knocking them down. Ante is starting to play a little better. Williams around the defender, pulls up from ten out, and the bank won't go. That shot knocked away. Another steal by Cam. The lead ahead. The layup is good for Tyler May. And the Aggies have cut the lead from Stanford to single digits. So Cam Langley now 
four, uh, four rebounds, three assists, three steals. He's doing what he does night in and night out, getting other guys involved and playing defense. That ball kicked out of bounds. a t on a 9-0 run over the last 4-23. As Kenyon Dooling, the spark off the bench with eight points. The baseline out of bounds play for the sofa gets knocked away. And the Aggies are on the run. The bounce pass feed gets stolen away. And that was probably not the right decision from Langley there. You know, he, he thought he saw something, but again, the gap defense of Stanford is just is great. I mean, you, you can't make those kind of passes against Stanford. Williams from downtown. Won't go for the freshman, and Langley will collect the rebound. Langley right now the leading rebounder for North Carolina A&T with five. A critical possession for the Aggies. Into the corner for dueling, the hot hand. And that one will not go. But again, anti stressing transition defense now. You know, I see Coach Jones saying, hey, get back, get back, get back. Don't watch him. Don't follow your shot just looking at it. Get back on defense. And that's been a difference over the last four minutes. And a foul there on Walter, a very clean game being played by both squads. Five personal fouls for Stanford. Four for a &T. That's the type of ball game you like if you're a fan. The feed down low to Kasunas, and that one is knocked out. So with Cam, Cam, excuse me, is, is just playing great defense. Ante, though, falling in love with the three ball instead of working the clock, working the possession. They've got to continue to do that. The Aggies just 3 of 12 from beyond the arc today. Davis passes out. Williams tries again from downtown, and that one won't go. Quinton Jones with the board. Stanford now scoreless over the last 542. Cam Langley slowing down this ball game. And he's bumped and fouled. Great job by Cam that time, creating that foul and creating the contact. Uh, 30 seconds remaining in the game, 20 on the, on the shot clock. I just saw Coach Jones tell him in the last, hey, slow down. Let's get a good look at the basket. You know, a bucket here gets him within, uh, get within six. If it's a three, it gets him within five. So that would be... Super for the Aggies going into halftime. Langley able to regain possession. Ten to work with. Here's Robinson. Through traffic. And he walked. Tough possession for a t there. Before the teams head into the locker room. Again, ball movement is going to beat Stanford. The dribble drive is not going to beat them. They play too well. Help side defense and in those gaps. You've got to move the basketball. The Cardinal would love nothing more here than a bucket to extend the lead to double figures. Heading into the intermission. Eight seconds here in the first half to go. They dared Deshaun Davis that time to shoot the three. Davis from downtown. That one off the heel. Nothing doing. And the Aggies able to cut this lead down to eight after the first 20 minutes of play. Good run by the Aggies over the last four or five minutes of, the, of that half. If they can keep up that kind of defensive intensity, they have a chance to claw back in this game and make it a good one. Uh, Cam continue to just settle these guys down. That's going to be the key. It's a 9-0 run over the final 6:35 for A&T, 31-23. Stanford leading North Carolina A&T here at the Corbett Sports Center. We're back after these messages. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. Sign up with any Chase Freedom Card. After three months, you're auto-enrolled in Dash Pass. Thousands of restaurants. Zero delivery fees. Visit DoorDash.com slash Chase Freedom. Back with you here at the Corbett Sports Center. 31-23. Stanford leading North Carolina A&T. In a non-conference game that was put together just 14 <laughs> hours ago, officially. Uh... And I'll tell you what, Walter, it looks like both teams very well prepared for each other. They knew exactly what each other was going to do out on the floor. A&T, at first, a little shell-shocked, I think. Yes. And then was able to get out of that funk. And a 9-0 run over the final 635, holding Stanford scoreless for that long. That's an impressive coaching change there by Will Jones. Well, Coach Jones. 
Coach Jones decided that his gap defense had to, had to get better. He put some smaller guys in, some quicker guys, guys that were willing to move their feet, and they caused Stanford some problems. But I do think that Stanford fell in love with the three ball. They only shoot about 19 a game. They've shot 17 in the first half. Now, 33%, they're on their percentage. But that's just too many threes for the size and the length that Stanford has. Uh, the other statistic that stood out to me, partner, just 28 rebounds for Stanford compared to 25 for A&T. Right. At one point, it was an 18-7 to 7 advantage. Uh, excuse me, 18-11 to 11 advantage for Stanford in that department, which means that the Aggies are getting a little more comfortable in the painted area. They're getting more comfortable. And at the, one of those timeouts, I guess it was about 11 minutes left, 10.45, Mark, I heard Coach Jones say, listen, guys, we've got to put bodies on these guys. They can't, they're coming through free and clear. We're not doing anything to, to impede them. From that point on, and he started putting bodies on, and their guards started rebounding. It became a five-man uh, mission to rebound as opposed to just the bigs. Zaire Williams struggling in this one. Just one of seven from the field, 0 for 3 from downtown. In his last game against Indiana, scored just four points with four rebounds on one of ten shooting. Yes. His first two on the season averaged 14.5 points per game. This is a McDonald's All-American that came in to Stanford as the highest-rated recruit. Uh, very highly touted, expected to be a, a potential lottery pick, if not a definite first-round pick in the 2021 NBA draft. However, he is still a freshman. Right. He's an 18-year-old, 19-year-old guy. He's been on the road now eight straight days. You know, for, for guys leaving high school, they're used to being at home, sleeping in their own bed, things of that nature. This guy's been in a hotel room or in a dorm room somewhere else for eight days now, and it looks like it's wearing on him a little bit. It doesn't look as, you know, I saw him play the other night. Doesn't have the same pop, you know, but he's still a great player. This guy can get it done. And he's one for seven. I don't look for him to be one for seven in the second half. Uh, we're coming up on that point where Stanford, if they stay a few more days, might be able to apply right. for residency <laughs> in the state of North Carolina. Uh, the Cardinal looking for one more game at least right. this week. Lost two games. Cal Poly on uh, the seventh. And then the ninth against Loyola Marymount, both canceled because you can't have games in Santa Clara County. So, right. of course, Stanford staying out here on the East Coast. Uh, Asheville, a little different than Hawaii. <laughs> that's for certain. Uh, both very lovely places, though. Right, right. And, uh, about, a, about a seven degree temperature right, difference. Right, <laughs> exactly. But the Cardinal making the best of their situation. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that Stanford has to be commended for. Uh, the fact that they're just rolling with it. They're trying to get things done. And also A&T, this is a, a team that was expected to play Longwood in its next game. Correct. And all of a sudden, here's a Power 5 opponent for the first time that just walked through the doors of your building. You know, and but as, as, a, as a player that plays mid-major, that's what you want. That's all you ask for. They want, listen, I felt like I was under-recruited. I felt like they should have gotten me. So... Come on in the building. Let's see what you can really do. And, and I think A&T over the last 10 minutes of this ball game has strapped it up and strapped it on. And these kids are showing that they can play at that level. Stanford had the highest ranked recruit in Zaire Williams come through their program now. Yes. He's out on the floor. North Carolina A&T's top, top ranked recruit is coming next season. Oh, man. A member of the ESPN Top 100, yep. Duncan Powell, number 85 in the class of 2021. And then he also has a three-star support cast in Chase McDuffie right. that will be here as well. A&T, according to most recruiting services, will finish in the top 100 for a recruiting class. That has never happened before for North Carolina A&T. You've got to give it up to Coach Will Jones. I mean, he's got out. He's, he's beat the pavement. He sent the emails. He's been on Twitter. He's been on Instagram. He's got these guys buying in. And, you know, just like O'Keefe, or O'Keefe, excuse me, father went to uh, Stanford. Duncan Powell's cousin went to A&T, and he was a standout for A&T for years, Adrian Powell. And I tell you what, sometimes those family ties help out in recruiting. Uh, they certainly do as we are set to send it to a couple of replays, take a look at All what right. happened in the first half as – you see, A&T had some luck breaking things out later in the first half. Kenyon Dooling, of course, uh, with an opportunity there, and he did indeed convert that bucket. Uh, he has looked really solid in the first half. Eight points, three of six shooting. He's coming off a 13-point performance at the Citadel just a few nights ago. That was a very run-and-gun type of game as well. 
You're starting to see the pace slow down in this one, though. Do you expect it to pick back up here early in the second half? I think what Stanford is going to try to come out and do, if, if I know Coach Haas or anything, he's going to say, hey, guys, first 10 minutes of the ball game, we were pushing tempo. We were getting up and down the court, and we were having no problems. Last 10 minutes of the ball game, we stopped. We start. We fell in love with the three. Let's get back into this transition game. I'm sure that's what they're going to try. Coach Jones is going to say, hey, guys, the last 10 minutes, we, uh, we got into playing good defense. We got into playing smart. Let's go back and continue to do those things. And, again, I think both teams are going to say, let's not fall in love with the three. And that has been a problem for both teams this year. Stanford shooting just 32.7% from downtown on the season. This afternoon, 5 of 17, and the Aggies on the year, 34.7% from beyond the arc. Today, just 3 of 12. Traditionally, uh, A&T, not a strong three-point shooting right. team. And I tell you what, if not for uh, Kenyon Dooling, wouldn't have but one three-pointer. He came in microwave-esque. He came right off the bench and started letting it go. I mean, a lot of guys have to get warmed up. He was warmed up sitting on the bench. Two years ago, A&T made it to the semifinals of the MEAC tournament with nobody on the season box score averaging more than 10 points per game. So everybody right. in single figures. Same thing this year so far. There's no dominant scorer. Can A&T continue to win basketball games this way without a dominant go-to guy? It's, it's going to be hard unless all five of those guys can stay consistent hitting nine or ten points a ball game. You know, but, but that doesn't normally happen. You know, what you're looking for is one guy that can give you consistently 14 or 15. They've got to do that. 31-23, Stanford leading North Carolina A&T. The second half coming up in just a few minutes. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. Back with you here in Greensboro, North Carolina. 31-23, Stanford leading North Carolina A&T. At the intermission, the Aggies closed out the first half on a 9-0 run over the final 635. So Walter, while AT able to hold Stanford scoreless over a nice chunk of time, right. the Aggies didn't deliver a lot of enough scoring to really <laughs> Uh, make them truly pay right. for it. Stanford still with a, a comfortable eight-point lead, but a and letting the Cardinals know that they're not going away. Not going away. You know, a and didn't burn it up. They only scored seven points over those last five, five and a half, six minutes. But they, 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 look, they're saying we're not going anywhere. We're going to continue to play hard. We're going to continue to play smart. And I know Coach Jones definitely wants them to play a little smarter. They had too many turnovers in the first half for his liking. But Stanford had a bunch of turn turnovers as well. The only difference was a and made, made the turnovers they, they took from Stanford. We had a lot, or a and had a lot of uh, unforced errors. The Corbett Sports Center, not known as an easy place to play basketball games. The eighth best home court advantage, according to KenPom.com. Uh, that in the nation. And A&T, 34-3 over the last three years here at the place that it's affectionately dubbed Club Corbett. <laughs> it, it, they are. They do very well at home. Uh, Stanford not getting the same pressure they would get if uh, we had 6,000 people in here, but it's still a tough place to play basketball for, for an opposing team. Both teams did miss a bunch of chippy, gimme layups. How do you overcome that in the second half? Well, you put the ball on the square. You know, a lot of them were finger rolls and flip shots and, and, and you know, stuff that wasn't fundamental. Put the ball on the square. Allow the square to be your friend, and I think both teams will shoot a lot better because one's shooting 33%, the other shooting 25%. I know both coaches want to improve on that. Stanford will start with the basketball here in the second half. Can I get it? And keep point. The Cardinals shooting 33.3% from the field. North Carolina A&T 25.7%. Stanford has not attempted a free throw. Yeah, you, you spoke about it earlier. It's been very clean basketball game. Only three free throws in the entire first half. Davis, beyond the arc, shot won't go, and the rebound taken by Williams. Here's De Silva. The freshman Williams, who struggled in the first half. Now the feed down low to Jones. Tip 
tack toeing in. And, and getting back to what they did in the first half, cutting without the basketball, and making five or six passes, making Ante have to work on every possession. That's where the Cardinal can put on a clinic. The crisp passes quickly all over the offensive end of the floor. Here's Dooling. Ran out of real estate. Ten on the shot clock now for Langley. Harris needs to do something. Three on the shot clock, and that will go out of bounds with two showing on the timer. Good ball movement, but better defense. Uh, Stanford has gotten back to what they started the game out with, moving their feet, you know, attacking. This has to be a quick catch and shoot. Yes. Here's Harris. Needs to turn and fire. And that will not get the job done. You know, you've got to know your situation. You've got to know the, the time that's on the clock. You know, somebody from the, from the bench probably should have shouted out to him, hey, two seconds, let's get it done. So the lead back up to 10 for the Cardinal. Here's Williams. De Silva leaves it for Jones. And that bounce pass through traffic gets kicked away. I, I just love Stanford's offense. I love the backdoor cuts. I love the pass and cut uh, philosophy by Coach Haas. You know, if you, if you pass and cut, make five or six passes, somebody is going to get open. Davis finds Williams. That one won't go, and his cold streak continues. Davis saw a bunch of Aggies waiting around and took advantage. And then that time, Ante just acted like photographers and just watched and uh, took some pictures and Davis said we're here take this Davis up to nine today on four of seven from the field dueling pump fakes here's Harris the NC State transfer leaves it for Langley hesitated now slices through and throws it in <laughs> <laughs> Langley with what we would call a, a sky hook or a jump hook but good look had to get something going because that's his first bucket of the ball game. That's usually reserved for somebody six foot six or taller. Yeah, Cam is what I call an old school player. I mean, he's, he plays on the playground growing up with, with a lot of older men, so he kind of picked up their game. He needs the peach baskets out here. <laughs> As the Silva. The Silva starting, you know, starting back where he left off. He's now 7 of 10, shooting 70% from the field. He has really lived up to the billing this afternoon, Walt. Dueling off the curl. Jones from downtown. That one won't go. The rebound secured by Williams. And again, Jones looked like he just forced that a little bit instead of waiting on it to come to him. The hop step and layup from Wills. And we have a push and a foul a, on Quick Jones. It was a blocking foul down low. Uh, Jones didn't move his feet quick enough to get in front, and Wills took advantage of it. So the foul will come after, after the, bucket. the bucket. Wow. So the basket will count, and it'll be a baseline out of bounds with 20 on the shot clock. That, that's a huge mistake. You know, you give Stanford a, 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 another whole possession. The float pass for De Silva, and it becomes a four-point play after the foul. Just got to be smarter. Dueling shakes off the defender, and Morris there to clean things up. Listen, I, I love Harry Morris. I love him. He would have to finish this game for him. I tell him, listen, young man, you've got to get yourself in shape to play 16, 17 minutes this half because you can be a difference maker. He does have the ability to shoot the three-point ball as well. A, a true European-style basketball player. Davis almost traveled. De Silva down low, up and in. 13, De Silva. What more can you say about De Silva? This guy is just, he, he's a man among boys out there. At that time, Blake Harris had to do a better job of playing backside help defense. He kind of fell asleep. Harris tries to throw it down low and a little too much mustard on that one. Tell you what, if a t doesn't be careful, they can get run out of here. De Silva up to 19 on 9 to yep. 12 shooting. That's what Davis and the rest of the Cardinal offense got away from in the first half late. They weren't getting the ball down low to De Silva. Into the corner. Now De Silva out top. 
I think it became so easy for Stanford at one point in the, in the ball game and De Silva again, 22 points. But it, came, it became so easy for him that everybody said, hey, I'm going to get in on the act instead of just saying, look, let's ride De Silva on to, to greater pastures. The first team all Pac-12 selection a year ago, making the most of his trip to the Corbett Sports Center. And Jones steals that one. Here's Davis, the lead to Williams. And we have a foul as Tyrone Lyons bumps Williams so that the off the backboard alley-oop will not count. 46-27, North Carolina A&T trailing Stanford here on the MEAC Digital Network from ESPN3. You could take your UC treatment in a different direction. Ask your gastroenterologist about Zeljans. Forty-six twenty-seven, Stanford leading North Carolina A&T with a 9-0 run to end the half for the Aggies. And now Stanford on an 11-2 run, all led by Oscar Da Silva. Oscar Da Silva is destroying North Carolina A&T right now by himself. But again, you, you mentioned it. They got away from him the last eight or nine minutes of the, sec of the first half, and they paid for it. And I think Coach Haas said, hey, Let's get back to what we were doing well, and Oscar De Silva is the guy who was, was doing well. Williams up and in with the first freebie. He has struggled mightily today. One of eight from the deck, 0 for 4 from beyond the arc. But if you're Jared Haas, you, you have to just live with that as a freshman. Oh, without a doubt. He's going to make some mistakes, but he's going to make some great plays. You know, he played with Sierra Canyon uh, alongside Bronny James and Zaire uh, Wade last year. Also played AAU basketball with LaMelo uh, Ball. This guy can play. Langley leaves it for Harris. The NC State transfer tries to lay it in, and it was a little too short. Here comes Wills in transition. The Euro step and layup. Wills looks like he might, might have been from Europe the way he hit him with that. That's beautiful. Oh, good pass inside. And who's there to knock it away and block it? De Silva. He runs the floor so well, sees the court tremendously. It was a nice pass, though, by Blake Harris, who pulls up from downtown. That one gets wedged. Langley there to try and clean it up, and it won't go. And Langley has to make that, that put back. I mean, got two rebounds on that, but should have gotten a bucket out of it. Williams. The feed down low. And De Silva can't finish, gets his own board. This one over the rim. Post move, then a put back. This guy's unstoppable. A two-year captain for the Cardinal. Langley gets trapped, that one's stolen, and it'll go out of bounds off of Stanford. Part of the problem, though, is a t is standing around and watching Cam and not moving to the ball and cutting to an open uh, gap. And Cam's only about six. He listed at six two, but really about six feet, six one. They're gonna trap him out top if they don't help him. Dueling draws the contact, and no shot on the foul. <laughs> I, I kind of disagree with that. I thought Dueling did a good job getting him up, and then as the whistle was blowing, he gathered and shot. And the rule is supposed to be once you gather, it's a shot. He was going for the NBA continuation. Yeah. <laughs> it's Aggie basketball. Lyons gets closed in on quickly. Falls into the hands of Harris. The no-look pass down low. And Morris finds Beautiful. the bottom of the cup. Beautiful pass, but a better cut by Morris. That time Morris used the, the Stanford uh, philosophy. Hey, look, and there he goes again. Ha oh. They called a foul on uh, Morris that time against the Silva. But again, Harris made the backdoor cut when his man turned his back on him. And th that's playing good fundamental basketball. And it'll be a sideline trigger on the pass. Here's the hot hand to Silva. De Silva going back and asking for the ball on the low block. Around I, Morris and in. Listen, he gets on that low block and he's tough to deal with. That is not an easy assignment for Harry Morris as Langley lets it fly from beyond the arc. That is not typically his shot. He shot one three-pointer all year and didn't make that. And now he has 0 for 2. 
Langley's more of a, a pick and pop type guy. Williams from the free throw line, nothing doing. And the Aggies trying to run. Harris around the screen. Kicks it out. Morris from downtown. And that is his shot. Morris says, come take this right here. I can play from outside. I can do it all. And Morris is actually quietly having a good game. Now 10 points on the ball game. Four of five from the field for the Wizard of Wormit. De Silva. That one knocked out by Langley. I tell you what, Cam Langley all over the floor. Cam Langley is playing like a man possessed on the defensive end. He's been doing it all ball game. He hadn't quite gotten it to go get, get, you know, go his way offensively, but defensively, this guy is playing a whale of a game. Nine seconds to work with for Stanford. The feed down low gets closed out. Davis lets it fly, and that one won't go as the shot clock was expiring. Good job blocking out by Blake Harris that time, but then he turns it over. His pocket was picked. Wills drops it off. Williams around the defender and in. They were just, again, they've gotten back to transition basketball, and it's just too much right now for A&T. That's where the athleticism of a Pac-12 team comes yes. into play. You know, a t has good athletes, but their athletes are 6'2 and 6'3. Uh, Stanford, good athletes, 6'7", 6'8", 6'9". Reinforcements on the way, though, for Will Jones' program. Oh, for sure. He's got, like I said, he's got two guys coming in. Uh, Duncan Powell, I think, is about 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, Athletic as can be and can play the game of basketball. And uh, was it Chase? And Chase McDuffie, yeah. a three-star recruit, yeah. according to... 247 Sports. And you don't see that too often Jeremy at a school at this level. It's Aggie. Able to garner commitments from recruits like that as Robinson has that one stuffed away by Jones. And the Cardinal have numbers. I think you can, you know, kind of thank uh, Chris Paul for some of this because, you know, in the NBA bubble, he was wearing HBCU shoes all through the, uh, the playoffs. The other thing is McCool Maker at Howard is a difference maker for HBCUs right now. 56-32, North Carolina A&T trailing Stanford. We're back after this. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network from ESPN3. The first meeting for an HBCU and then a Power Five with the HBCU as the host. If you see Aaron Morris draining that triple, he's up to 10 this evening. Uh, Georgia Tech played at Tennessee State in 2007. Of course, former Aggies head coach Cy Alexander was the head coach of Tennessee State at the time. Here's Williams, swings it over into the corner. Triple on the way, won't go from Tate's. And the Aggies are back going the other way. Uh, Oregon State played at Howard. Of course, President Barack Obama was in attendance for that one. Yep. His brother-in-law, Craig Robinson, was the head coach of Oregon State. Tell you what, that's a, uh, a big deal for HBCUs. And this court is named the Don Corbett, or Cal Irvin, Don Corbett Court, who are two legendary coaches here. And I'm sure they would both be proud and would have, would have loved to have had the opportunity to get some Power Fives come in when they were coaching because they had to go out six or seven times a year to play them at their homes just to pick up a paycheck. Uh, they most certainly would have. And you mentioned Cal Irvin mm -hmm. uh, and Don Corbett. Of course, Don Corbett won... Uh, Conference tournament championships from 82 to 87. His teams were pretty much unstoppable. And then you think of Cal Irvin. Yes. A guy who was actually John Thompson's mentor and got John Thompson into collegiate coaching and made him the coach that he was. I, I remember, Walter, yep. uh, I was actually at the Georgetown a and basketball game a few years ago. And John Thompson called me over to the baseline to tell me how important and how instrumental Cal Irvin was to his career. Yeah. And I sat there in shock, in awe, that John Thompson took the time to make sure that he spread that message and how important Cal Irvin was to the game of basketball. Well, John Thompson is, was the ultimate historian. He always wanted you to know 
who the uh, the pioneers were. And Cal Irvin was definitely one of those pioneers and for, the, for a long time was the winningest coach in A&T history. Basket good by number 23, Brandon Angel. Brandon Angel on the cleanup job yes. down low. And, and they've taken control uh, of the boards in this second half. You know, a t had gotten him in three boards of, of being even. All of a sudden, it's 41 to 31. And offensive boards are wearing a t out right now. The Aggies have been held scoreless for the last 232. Angel at the line so Brandon Angel, the freshman out of San Diego, California, will head to the line, and he drains the freebie. And Brandon Angel, another kid, six foot eight, two fifteen, long and athletic. And we have a whistle and foul down low. It'll go against Angel. Number twenty-three, Brandon Angel. That's his first. Good job that time fighting by Tyler Jones, uh, getting inside position, fighting for a rebound, you know, trying to make a difference in a presence in this game on the boards. So Harris will trigger the baseline out of bounds. You can hear Will Jones telling his team they have to move. Nine on the shot clock. Harris. Cuts towards the hole, and the off-balance shot won't go. Follows it himself. Cleveland shakes off the defender. The short corner jumper, nothing doing. And the rebound to Zaire Williams. You know, we talked at the break about the fact that they missed a lot of chippies because they weren't using the backboard. And that time, Harris had a chance to go in with the left hand, put it off the glass. He didn't. He went in with the right hand and tried to float it. Hence the miss. That's his first. At the line for the Cardinals. Michael O'Connell will Michael head to the strike. The Mineola, New York native out of Blair Academy in New Jersey. And he makes his first free throw attempt. The Cardinal perfect from the line so far. And this half, Ante is back to struggling from the floor. Only shooting four of 17 right now and one of seven from three. Here's May. Curls and banks at home. It's <laughs> a Sunday in the banks <laughs> open. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to have to call that if you're down at the park. Different rules in Club Corbett, supposedly. <laughs> Here's O'Connell. Finds Williams. Down the lane, drops it off, and Angel can't finish. You know, all the, all the people in the scouting report on Williams was he sees the floor so well. And you see what they're talking about right there. He went to the, lane, went to the rack like he was going to score it and finds the wide open cutter. Tate's just sliced through the entire Aggie defense for that bucket. As a t is out of rhythm on the offensive end of the floor. Harris through traffic. Contact and the foul. Yeah, out of rhythm because just too much, too many bounces. They, they, you know, everybody wants to bounce. Everybody wants to pat the ball. At this point in time, they've got to pass and cut. They've got to put some pressure on Stanford, make Stanford play defense without the basketball and not in, or, or without being on ball defense. But a is not doing that right now. They're, they're, they're bailing Stanford out. Of course, Blake Harris played his high school basketball at Word of God Academy. The same place where John Wall yep. was a prep star. As you see, Will Jones. And while you say John Wall, he's now headed to Houston in a big yes. trade. So no longer the teammate of Jeremy Robinson's brother up at Washington. Yeah. I thought that was a pretty good trade for everybody involved. Oh, I, I think so. I think so. I think uh, Houston's going to be happy. And Angel I, spots up, and that one won't go. And Harris able to regain his dribble and get up off the deck. Full head of steam for Harris. He's underneath the hole, kicks it out. Jones, the 10-footer. That one rims out, and Williams clears the board. It's a three-on-two for the Cardinal. Keefe around the defender, falling back, can't finish, and O'Connell will have to but settle it up. If you look, Blake Harris never crossed half court that time, defending. And he gets a break. And the lead for Kyler May. May. And you talked about... Um, Jeremy's brother playing uh, in the NBA at Washington. A&T, over the last five or six years, 
have had the brothers of about three NBA players, you know, on their roster. Terry Harris, of course, was yes. a member of the A and T Aggies. Tate over to the wing for Williams. Seven on the shot clock. The hook won't go. And, of course, the Aggies hoping to see one of their most famous alums when they go to the Bay Area to return this game for the home-and-home. Home. Al Adels, the longest-tenured NBA executive, works for the Warriors. He's been a part of history. He's been a part of history, and, you know, he played here at a and when my, my mother and father were in school, and my father was a good friend of his. And speaks of uh, Al reverently, you know, and the fact that he's had over 60 years in the NBA speaks volumes. 63-37, Stanford in control on the east side of Greensboro. We're back after this on the MEAC Digital Network from ESPN3. Delivered right to your door if prescribed. Get started for just $29 today. Go to 4 Back to the action here in Greensboro. Uh, Stanford in control. And we failed to mention while talking about Al Adels how much history he's really seen. Of course, he, he was playing for the Philadelphia Warriors at the time uh, when Will Chamberlain scored 100 points. That's and nobody, nobody seems to mention the fact that Al Adels went 8 for 8 that night from the field. <laughs> 8 for 8, 17 points. His PER was probably off the charts that <laughs> night. Uh, but Just overshadowed a little bit. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's the thing about him. He, he, he was efficient. He did his job. And a lot of people don't know it. He was kind of the, the, uh, the tough guy on the team. You know, he was from Newark, New Jersey. And uh, at 6'1", he played the Charles Oakley type role. Of course, had his jersey retired here at the Corbett Sports Center. Now a member of the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. The run out ahead to Kasunas. Oh, good job by Kasunas that time, saving that and saving the possession for Stanford. This Stanford team hustles all over the place. There is not a second that they are out there walking on the field. Tates. Stanford that time tried to elevate the screens coming off of the uh, out-of-bounds play. Nice block by Harry Morris there. Yeah. And, and, and again, I can't say enough about this kid, Harry Morris. Don't know why he's not receiving you know, more minutes. He's a guy that can play at this level. Ten points, four or five shooting. He's been pretty solid on the defensive end today with a very tough assignment. Merle from downtown. That one goes. Wow. Merle was out on East Market Street that time when he took that shot. The freshman from Omaha, Nebraska. His father, a collegiate athlete as well, a four-time All-American high jumper at the University of Minnesota. Here's Lyons from just inside the arc. Contact and the foul, and he'll head to the line for two ribbies. And that time Lyons bought a foul, uh, kicked his leg out a little bit, and got the contact. But again, going back to Harry Morris, uh, Spencer, 11 minutes is all he's played, and he has 10 points. He's been very efficient while he's been in there. Tyrone Lyons, a 72.7% free throw shooter. Goes up and makes the first. A&T's free throw shooting has improved tremendously this year. Shooting 71.7% from the line a year ago. Finished 347th in the nation, 60.9%. There were a few ball games that this squad lost because of that free throw shooting. Yes, there were. You know, it, being here watching them play quite a bit was... There were, there were nights it was just frustrating. You know, they would shoot 50, 55% from the free throw line, and you're not going to beat good teams doing that. Merle, nine on the shot clock for the Cardinal. Pulls up and drains the bucket. Looked like he was stuck and made the worst of a, made the most of a yeah, bad situation. He did. Me. It was great defense, but even better offense that time. Merle knocked down a little 15-footer, and... Part of the game, I think, that's gotten away from, from this generation of player, that mid-range game. You know, everybody wants to shoot it from 23 feet or dunk it. It's that old-school basketball that is missing these days, and it's something that when you have that skill set, teams don't really know how to defend it. 
they don't. It's tough to defend um, because of what the way these teams now spacing the floor. Good move by Cam Langley that time getting in. And he even tried to create some contact that time, Spencer. Langley is not afraid to get down low with the big guys. Eight boards already tonight. Tates. That A one knocked defense. out by Lions. The lead ahead to Langley. And that layup will go. Quick timeout by Coach Jones trying to get his guys hopefully back in this ball game. And we'll have a timeout on the floor. 68-42, Stanford in control. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. Galaxy S20 Plus. It's like a gift on top of another gift. Gifts keep coming at you. Everywhere. This is 5G from America's most reliable network. Back with you here in Greensboro, 68-42, Stanford leading North Carolina A&T in what has been a historic day on the east side of Greensboro, the first Power 5 opponent to play the Aggies in basketball here in the Corbett Sports Center. Angel from beyond the arc, that one won't go. The rebound to Merle. Merle, good job rebounding that long, that long shot that time. I just love the way that Stanford hits the boards. Uh, they've made a, a major difference in this second half. They're now plus 13 or 13 or 14 on the boards for this half. And that, Spencer, has been the difference in being down eight and now A&T being down 24. Tyler May up to eight points on the afternoon. Here's O'Connell. Splits the defenders, left it short, and the putback won't go either. And now a tie-up down low between Kasunas and Morris. I think they're going to call a foul that time on Harry Morris. Or did they? Yeah, they call a foul on Harry, yep. So a foul was charged to Harry Morris, his third personal. Taking it now for the Aggies, number 21. David Greer will see some action for the Aggies. A seven-footer who's relatively new to the game of basketball. Has only played two years of junior college ball. Didn't play in high school. You know, uh, whoever the high school coach was there ought to, ought to be looking for a job. Play opportunity. <laughs> And yeah, how do you not get a seven footer uh, in your hallways out for basketball? It means you're not too diligent in finding out who's at the school. I'm pretty sure there are not many seven footers walking around Ocean Springs, Mississippi. <laughs> 3.52 to go in this one, 68.44. We'll take a timeout. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network from ESPN3. gel to target pain directly at the source for powerful arthritis pain relief. Voltaren, the joy of movement. Back with you here in Greensboro as we come down the home stretch, 70 to 44, the Cardinal leading it. All, both teams with a lot on their plates here coming up as you see Tyler May with the smooth mid-range jumper. Max Merle to the line. North Carolina A&T with three more games this week. Tuesday at Longwood, Wednesday at VCU, and then Saturday, Western Carolina will come to Greensboro. Stanford still looking for at least one more game here in North Carolina before heading out west for a battle at USC as O'Connell on the run towards the hole and lays it up and in. Great denied defense by O'Connell that time and just got into the passing lanes and was able to jump that and get down and get an easy layup. Here's Langley. 
Last year's NCAA leader for assists per game. Also led the nation Fellow in triple doubles two, a year ago. Lucas Asunas. Hotel wholesale changes being made now for the Cardinals. You know, it's the, the Cardinal the going to empty the bench here a little bit and get some of this young talent, part of the 10th ranked freshman class, according to ESPN. And this is the time to do it. You know, you can play them here, play them a lot this year, and they not lose any eligibility, you know, because of the COVID uh, rules by we, with the NCAA. So get all these guys as much game experience as you can. Seven on the shot clock. Lions pulls up from downtown. That one rims out a little too strong. And the rebound will fall to Begovic. If you're Stanford, you're playing away from home now as that pass intercepted by Tyrone Lyons and the Aggies trying to push the pace. How do you get yourself comfortable as you have to continue to live on the road because of COVID restrictions? It's got to be a philosophy that I heard a coach tell me about a, a few years ago. Every gym is home. If you're a basketball player, that's, the, that's your philosophy. It's got to be that way. But to your point, it's got to be tiring on them and, you know, because they're on the road so long and they're not in their own beds. But just got to have a mindset that we're going we're gonna to go out here and make this gym our home gym. And because there's only a few COVID uh, fans, it can be your gym. Neil Begovic with the three-pointer as this one gets rotated out to the wing. Matthews can't hit the tray. We have a whistle and a foul and a three-point opportunity for Sam Beskin. Tell you what, great play that time by Beskin. Beskin good. Taking the ball to the rim, not giving up on it, and attacking the basket. And that's what you're supposed to do, attack the basket. And for the Aggies, number one, Jeremy Robinson. Also Jeremy Robinson and Webster Fillmore Webster are into the ball game for A&T. That freebie won't go. Matthews. Now here's Langley. And that one off the glass it is. A la Rajan Rondo type move that time. But Langley now with his, his season average of eight points. Eight rebounds, has five assists and four steals to go along with it for the Aggies. And that one gets thrown away by Kasunas. Well, if you're a and what did you learn about your team today? Well, I mean, I know in the first half they didn't quit. You know, the second half they just have not shot, shot the ball well at all. But they're, they're a team that's continuing to fight continuing to try to do the, the, the right things and make the right plays. So I know Coach is going to say, listen, fundamentally there were some things we did wrong, but there were some eight, nine-minute runs where we played the game right. Now let's replicate those and turn it into a 40-minute game. Kasunas will get charged with the offensive foul. And now we have a technical foul as well that has been assessed. So we'll Ta see if we can get some clarification on that. He said uh, Kasuna's got the offensive foul and the technical foul. Um, don't know what he said, but, you know. And Jared Hess, not going to have that. It appears he's going to have a little conversation with Kasunas as Milton Matthews will step to the line to shoot the technical free throw. And that one the Aggies by Milton Matthews. A personal foul was assessed against Kasunas as well as a technical foul. And I'm sure Coach Oz is saying, listen, we have this game solidly in hand. Let me worry about the let me worry about the officials. You worry about playing the game, son. Because in a game that's tight, we can't have you do that. As we see, gave the little chicken wing. And he threw the basketball. Right. Robinson, right. That was the technical right there. Frustrated was the junior from Lithuania. And we had talked about it earlier, 
how a and had done such a much better job this year shooting free throws. Tonight, they're four for nine. Langley into the corner for Maddox. And that three won't go, and the rebound cleared away by O'Connell. And Stanford can slow this thing down a little bit. Langley with the steal, and it'll touch the sideline and go out of bounds. Well, the second half of this basketball game, uh, Spencer, all Stanford Cardinals. Uh, they were up eight at the break. They've only scored 31 points. They've just gone berserk on a t this second half and, and played a much better game. Their shooting has been better. Their passing has been better. They've protected the ball much better. They've only had five turnovers this half. Here's Fitzmorris, and that one is short, and the shot clock is off, and Jared Haas calls off the dog, and that will do it from out here in Greensboro. 78-46, the final score. Stanford victorious over North Carolina A&T. Cardinal moved to 2-2 two two on the season. North Carolina A&T falls 2-4. and four. So for my partner, Walter Johnson, I'm Spencer Tootman, saying so long from the Fortis Sports Center in Greensboro, North Carolina. The final score, 78-46, Stanford is the victor. Thank you for watching for the MEAC Digital games Network games on ESPN3. All games there on the ESPN Network are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a Thank presentation you. of ESPN. Good afternoon, everybody. And remember to wear a mask.